When Notion is slow or down in the middle of the night, who are they gonna call? No, and don't expect the developer to get out of bed either. The person that gets the call is me. I'm an infra engineer and for over a decade when my phone rings, it's usually because something's on fire. I once got a call riding the kids train in the local zoo with my son, resulting in me typing away at my laptop trying to get it fixed before the ride ended, looking like a total weirdo. Then again, the fix is usually... Have you tried turning it off and on again? Now, the feedback I'm giving in this video hasn't been confirmed by Notion. While I did call them, all they could give me was... I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. I was on the right track though, so let me show you how I look at Notion from the outside in as an engineer. The internet looks very clean when you're working on it, but in the back end, there's a lot of duct tape. And in this video, I'm going to look at the main building blocks of Notion. There are probably a couple more, but I'm trying to get this video done before my new PlayStation arrives. First we have the front end and that usually runs on your laptop or phone so most of the scaling there happens because you bring the hardware to run it and that makes it easy to scale. And if we take a quick peek into the task manager you can see that most Notion tabs take about a hundred megabytes of memory and that's the front end. It's running a complete application inside your browser and as most most websites do that these days, this is why Chrome is known as such a memory hog. Now since these front ends all run on our devices, it scales with the amount of users you have and it also means that even though the back end is slow, Notion is still snappy when you're typing away in one of your text fields. And then we have the back end and like most web application, Notion talks to the back end using its API. And we can see that because if I look in the network data of the browser, I can see my front and Notion application talking with the backend through an API interface. There's calls happening left and right. Now the goal of an API is pretty simple. It's either requesting data that you have stored at Notion or sending your changes back at Notion when you're typing at your keyboard. The backend takes care of some of the heavy lifting like knowing who you are and collecting what's needed for the front end. Another tidbit, you get a different backend every time you put in a request. So anytime you're entering something, it goes through a whole passport check to make sure who you are. And you thought Google was annoying if you're logging into a new device. Finally, we get to where all your information is actually stored. This is usually a database for anything you draw or type. And then we have what is called a blob storage for images and large files. Now storing and getting images isn't what makes Notion slow. This is handled by Amazon Cloud Storage and that thing basically runs on Infinity Stone. And I know it's running on Amazon because if I take a picture and I just say open picture in new tab, I can see the URL and you can see the Amazon URL at the top of it. So by the process of elimination, that only really leaves one element left and that is the database it Self. Now before I dive into that, I'm quickly going over a couple of the elements I'm skipping here so that I don't get a lot of comments about it. I'm skipping over things like content delivery networks, cache, message queues, but like I can see in my app that the postman is going to be here any minute now, so I'm not going to dive too deeply into those. If you're enjoying the content so far and you want me to make more of these in-depth videos, then be sure to leave a like or comment on what software you want me to look at next. Now let's imagine a small store and in the beginning it's easy, they know all their customers. Suddenly a single store isn't enough and then you realize that somebody thought it was a good idea for people to share packages with each other and that means that not only do you have to open a second store but you also have to set up the logistics to move packages in between stores and remember while you are making these changes customers keep coming and it's been compared to changing the wheels of a race car while it's winning a race and you have to make sure that everything stays working the way it was because because else you might lose the customers that got you here in the first place. Now, Notion has had major growth and that means that at some point bottlenecks start showing up. And the funny thing with bottlenecks is that you can make a rough estimate on what to expect, but you really don't know what bottlenecks you have until you actually hit them. Like this one time we implemented something called Stone It. Goal of it is that if you have like a couple of machines, like five, and one of these machines stops responding, then the four other machines get together and go like, hey, that one machine, that one isn't performing, get it to reboot and then it can rejoin us and we can keep working. And it sounds like a wonderful idea, but we all know that this went bad quickly. And it went bad, it went bad during Christmas. So what happened is that 
that on Christmas there was so much load on these machines that they basically were too busy to respond to each other to tell them that they were still alive. So what happened is like the first machine became too slow, the four other machines went like, hey, that machine's too slow, let's just kill it. And that repeated itself until one server was left. This was like a Mexican standoff situation and somebody had to deal with it. So I spent a Christmas Eve with a couple of co-workers in a remote call trying to get this fixed while I had a very, very angry father-in-law that had spent the whole day making turkey and Christmas dinner and me not attending it while I was working with my co-workers to get this fire doused and get everything up and going again. Good times. Bottlenecks come in different shapes and sizes and usually it's just a tweak here, an add of memory there, a machine and then you're done. And then there's the other one, the bad one, the one that requires you to rewrite things from the top down and reprioritize whatever you got planned like an API or feature request. And that's probably what Notion is hitting. And when it comes to databases, reading isn't usually an issue. Notion is an application that has a lot of rights. You can't scale that because all the databases need to know the change you made. So the way that writing works is that there's usually a master database. So any change anybody makes in Notion gets sent to this one master database. And you can already see where the bottleneck is happening there because that's like one machine that needs to take care of all the things and you can't scale it because if you scale it the changes still need to be copied to all the machines causing some kind of virtual traffic jam and you can see that when you're doing something with a lot of writes for example opening a template with a lot of blocks and I mostly noticed that when I was in meetings where I had like a meeting template and where I didn't have the two minutes to wait for the template to load because everybody's already talking. Now, how can Notion fix this? Well, one of the things that they're probably doing is splitting up the database and that will give another feature because that means that you can have like a database in Europe, Asia and America, meaning that for people outside the US, things will be quicker because our changes and things fetching won't have to take a transatlantic line under the ocean to fetch stuff from the database that's in the US. But that gives you a couple of interesting challenges. For example, there's a lot of URLs out there, but the URL only tells you which page to open. It doesn't tell you on what database you should be. Now, these are hard challenges because they require different layers of people to work together to get it working again. Like the front end people need to develop the front end in such a way that it talks to the right back end. And then the back end needs to be reconfigured so it talks to the right database and the right file storage. One of the things that probably will happen is that they will encode the cluster you are on inside the URL. Now, this is long string in the end when you're using Notion and that one will probably increase by size by one or two characters because they add that information. You won't see any changes though because this is hashed information and not something we mere mortals read but the back end will know how to decrypt it and then redirect the person to the right cluster meaning we all get less load because we don't share the same machine worldwide will there be more bottlenecks in the future undoubtedly because bottlenecks happen but sharding your application so making sure that it splits up and that you can run multiple clusters is one of the big ones. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of engineering to do it while keeping everything running up and working. And I think Notion is taking the right approach, giving this priority over other things that they've promised, like the API, because if you wait another year, it might get so slow that you start losing customers left and right. And that's, of course, something you want to avoid if you want to make your application a long-lived one, which we all hope for Notion. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then all I ask for is that you push that like button. That really helps me to promote the video. There's more videos for you to watch over here. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.